Hey Redemption Kids! We have learned about the first three steps in Bible study. Observation, interpretation, and correlation. Observation is when we are figuring out what the Bible is saying. Interpretation is when we are answering the question, what does it mean? And correlation is when we are comparing and connecting one scripture to other scriptures in the Bible. We are essentially trying to figure out how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. This week, we're going to discuss the fourth step in Bible study. Application, or putting what we've learned into action. When we apply the knowledge we discover through observation, interpretation, and correlation, we become more like Jesus by obeying the scriptures and commands that have been breathed out by God. Scripture frequently provides general truths for a variety of situations, and then God uses the Holy Spirit to help us figure out how to put these truths into action. Failing to apply what we've learned and studied to our everyday life is just disastrous. It would be like taking the time to prepare this huge Thanksgiving meal and setting it on the table just so, so, so everything was perfect and then never sitting down to eat the meal. Now, when we apply the Bible, we need to keep in mind that the Bible isn't about us. It's all about Jesus. It's important to understand that studying and learning scripture guides us how we are to behave, but it is not the main purpose of scripture. The Bible from Genesis all the way through Revelation, it's all about Jesus. And he is woven through every piece of the puzzle. And that's why the Bible is worthy of lifelong study. Now, as we're working through the steps of Bible study, it is so important to remember that we should always ask God to use the Holy Spirit to help us observe what the scripture is saying and help us to interpret what the scripture means, help us connect scripture to scripture, and to show us where to apply what we've learned to our lives. So this week in our challenges, we're going to do a trust walk. That's where you put a blindfold on and then you listen to someone give you directions and you have to listen and obey what they're saying or you might run into some kind of obstacle. Our scripture reading this week is Psalm 139, the whole chapter. And we love Jesus and we want to learn more about him. So stay tuned for this week's storybook reading by Brooke Taylor. Now, our creative challenge this week is probably by far my favorite. It may very well be my favorite of the entire series. We have named it, The Greatest of These is Love. Now, throughout the Bible, God commands us to love each other. He commands us to love certain people, and He commands us to love certain ways. So, what we want you to do is, as a family, we want you to brainstorm together and pick someone that you can um, do a random act of kindness for. Now, how you're going to document it is you can either take your picture while you are brainstorming, you can take your picture while you're in the act of the random act of kindness, or you might even be able to catch a video of the person that you're performing the random act of kindness for and then post it and then we'll all be able to enjoy the love that you've shared with who you've chosen. Now, there's more directions and more detail on um, listed on the the page for the challenges for parents to have as a go-to guide. Your sermon notes journals, how are you all doing? We have a folder that we keep them in so we don't lose them. We fill them out, kids give them to me, I put them in the folder, we know where they are. We'll bring the folder back. We hope you have a folder too. And then, are you practicing those books of the Bible? Did you realize that there's a song posted on the Redemption Parents Facebook page that you could be learning? It's there, you should go check it out. I love you all, I miss you, and I can't wait to see you in person. Bye. Hey Redemption Church and Kiddos, my name is Brooke Taylor, and today we'll be reading out of the Jesus Storybook Bible, A New Way to See, which is on page 334. Of all the people who kept the rules, Saul was the best. 
I'm good at being good, he'd tell you. He was very proud and very good, but he wasn't very nice. Saul hated anyone who loved Jesus. He traveled around looking for them. He wanted to catch them and put them in prison. He wanted everyone to forget all about Jesus. He didn't believe Jesus was the rescuer, and he didn't believe Jesus was alive either. You see, Saul had never met Jesus, so one day, Jesus met Saul. Saul was on his way to Damascus, when suddenly, a dazzling light flashed like lightning. It was brighter than the sun. It was too bright. Saul shielded his eyes and fell to the ground. He heard a loud voice. It was too loud. It gave Saul a headache. Saul, Saul, said the loud voice. Why are you fighting me? Lord, Saul answered, who are you? I am Jesus, said the voice. When you hurt my friends, you are hurting me too. Saul's whole body trembled. Go to the city, Jesus said. I'll tell you what to do. When Saul opened his eyes, he couldn't see. His helpers had to hold his hand and lead him like a little child. Saul was blind for three whole days, and yet it was as if he was seeing for the very first time. Meanwhile, there's a man called Ananias who loved Jesus. Jesus came to him in a dream. Go to Saul and pray for him, and I'll make him see again. Ananias knew all about Saul and how he hated Jesus' followers. Lord, he has come to hurt us. But Jesus told Ananias, Saul is the one I've chosen to tell the whole world who I am. So Ananias went to Saul. Brother Saul, Ananias said, it was Jesus you met on the road. And Ananias prayed for Saul. Suddenly, Saul could see again, but he saw everything differently. He wasn't mean anymore. He even changed his name from Saul to Paul, which means small and humble, the very opposite of proud. And do you know what Ananias' name means? The Lord is full of grace. Grace is just another word for gift, which is funny because that's just what Paul's messages were all about from then on. It's not about keeping the rules, Paul told people. You don't have to be good at being good for God to love you. You just have to believe what Jesus has done and follow him. Because it's not about trying. It's about trusting. It's not about the rules. It's about grace. God's free gift that cost him everything. What happened to Paul? He met Jesus. Paul got a new job. He called himself a servant and traveled everywhere telling everyone about Jesus. He got shipwrecked three times. He even ended up in prison. God loves us, he wrote from prison. Nothing can ever, no, not ever, separate us from the never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love of God he showed us in Jesus. And so it was, just as God promised Abraham that dark night all those years before, the family of God's children grew and grew until one day they would come to number more than even all the stars in the sky. Cool. I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you soon.